Glory to God. How many just love the word of God? Amen. I'm in the right church then. Glory to God. We, we love to worship. We love to praise, which uh, God loves it when we praise him and, and lift our voices and, and actually act like we're excited to be saved and actually believe like we're saved. Acts like, act like he's got something going on for us, you know, <laughs> amen. That those, those, uh, you know, to please God, we have to believe that he is and, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. And uh, so it's a blessing to be able to, to do this in the congregation of the righteous and to join together as the, uh, the family of God, the people of God. And, and that just thrills God. And he says, oh, how lovely it is when we walk in unity, like the oil that runs down the beard of Aaron. I mean, he just loves us to flow together, work together, live together, move together. And it seems like that the enemy always is trying to do something different than that. Always trying to destroy, kill, right? And uh, so I would, I would definitely uh, much rather be, uh, you know, a lover and a healer than a, a hater and a herder. Amen. And uh, so we got to make sure that we're um, all walking and flowing in that because uh, the other is uh, it drains our strength. Praise God. And I want to talk to you this morning about uh, finishing strong, uh, being a strong finisher, and uh, what it would take for that to take place. Um, uh, uh, for one thing, uh, we're going to have to learn to get happy. Turn to your neighbor and say, just get happy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, years ago, <laughs> years ago, Bobby McFerrin, uh, you know, had a song, you know, don't worry, be happy. And uh, it just was such a catchy tune. I think everybody on the planet was singing it. Uh, I guess he hated it. But anyway, he, he just said, because that's all people wanted him to do was that song. And he was a very creative um, gift and, and had all kinds of things he could do. Uh, but, but anyway, so, but it got catchy. And what's happened is you're walking around saying, don't worry, be happy. You know, and he's like, ah! You know, making these happy noises, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> but we need to make some happy noises, don't we? We need to we need to rejoice. And and uh, and, and so I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about that for sure. I'm not sure if we'll make it out of that because it is 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 probably one of the greatest attacks. Of the enemy is to steal your joy. And, and uh, uh, Jerry Seville, uh, you know, years ago had a message called if, the, if, if Satan can't steal your joy, he can't steal your goods. And it's true. And your goods isn't just natural, physical, you know, financial, that kind of thing. It's, it's your goods it is, is literally your peace, right? Literally your joy, literally all those things. It, 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 the enemy comes to steal those. And uh, in the area of joy, we know um, how important joy is. Uh, in order to finish strong, you're going to have to find out how to fight your way back into joy. And uh, so, so um, if, if you didn't get that, that blessing, and I hate to go back there, but I, I was blessed by my mom on how to figure out how to get happy when things weren't going the way I wanted them to. And she would, you know, I mean, back in the old days, we heard the, you know, do you want me to give you something to cry about? Did anybody hear those, that phrase? And you're thinking, you know, as a child, you're thinking, well, no. No, I'm crying right now. I'm trying to manipulate you to go giving over to my way. And you're talking about inflicting more problems in my life. No. <laughs> but when they would actually meet you there, they're helping you to control your emotions, right? That you could get happy in the same shoes you got disappointed in. And if you, if we don't find our way back into joy, then the enemy will access our goods. And again, it could mean your finances, but it's, it could be your peace. We need peace. We need to be able to walk through our day into difficult situations and maintain peace and joy. And if you keep smiling, the devil gets confused because he's trying to make you not happy. <laughs> and you just let and just smile. And he just starts giving up, man. I can't even affect them. They just won't be affected. And so, so let's look at uh, in the Old Testament real quick here. 
It says in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, you can look there. This is uh, the new King James primarily. Nehemiah 8.10, it says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those from whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. Why? Why not sorrow? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we say, well, I'd just like to get stronger. Well, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We have got to push through whatever emotional or whatever uh, challenges that we're dealing with, and they could be real. I'm not saying they're not real, but I'm just saying you can't afford to maintain oppression, depression. You can't afford to stay in that dark place because that is a place of defeat when joy is your strength. Praise God. And I sure appreciate uh, Minister Curtis who, who helps us go into that. But we come to church sometimes with heaviness a little bit, you know, and, 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 and he just won't let you stay there. He's going to, he's going to get out of that place. Come join me on in this place. And he starts to worship me like, wow, you know, I'm like, He just makes your body flap around when you get in the presence. He's like, whoa, glory to Jesus. Sang, brother, sang, you know, and, and all these other amazing uh, gifts that we have up here with Caitlin and Kiana and, and oh my goodness, what a joy. And then, then uh, you know, Sabrina, she comes up here and it's been a while, but she, she's repented. Now she's back. And so it's good to have her. You know, I didn't notice her because she was in camouflage, you know. And, and, uh, but she came up here and just blessed us. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And, and, and it's what a great example though, of that, how we need each other. And, and when we see each other in a certain way or a certain place that we help each other get out of that place that we know that you shouldn't be in. And you know, when you say, how are you doing today? And they go, oh, I'm, I'm good. You know, that ain't true. You know, they're just trying to, you know, work the way. You just say, come on, girl, or come on, bro. What's up? Come on, let's do this. Jesus has died. He is buried. He was risen. And we are the victory. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. And just pull out and get back into your place of raw, right? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. Everybody just say, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Amen. So we, we, we laugh at these things. These things that try and argue with God's word. That argue with victory. Argue with uh, having peace. And we have to do something. We can't just accept those things. We have to do something. Actually make some noise. Uh, make an expression uh, that is, is an argues with and defies those things that are saying you aren't going to make it it's not going to be that good things are going to get worse blah 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 it don't matter what's going on the enemy's going to try and steal your joy hallelujah and i, I you know the word of god is our first stop the word of God is our first stop to break barriers, to break out from under oppression, to break into the place God wants us to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you, I, I love God's word. I, I, I think God, you know, people think, oh, the internet is kind of dangerous. But I mean, I, I like the internet. I like to look at, at uh, things that are on social media and not all of it's good. I'm not saying it's all good. I'm just saying there are good things there. And I mean, you just see how um, uh, these these people will exploit how how wonderful and amazing animals are. Does anybody like animals? Yeah. And I found sometimes, which is weird, uh, that when I'm in a certain kind of way, I just look at these these animals and how they act. I really believe God gave us all these kind of things to bring happiness and joy to our lives. Did you know that? I said the first stop is the word. That is the absolute first stop. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. But are there some things that, that kind of make you happy? Yeah, we won't go into all the things, not in this setting. But anyway, so we know that animals are funny. Have you watched those animals? And the cutest things are going, they're captured because of all the power of the internet and, and video and capturing things on phones. You see some really cool things. 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, it just melts your heart. Watching, watching cows hang out with chickens and ducks hang out with, you know, and, and, and elephants. And I mean, I'm just like, wow. And, and you say, well, those things aren't important. Well, why did God make them? He's given us all things to enjoy. Thank you, honey. All things to enjoy. There's just so many things that bring joy. So we need to not meditate on the bad, but we need to start considering those things that are good. Setting our mind on things above, on things that are lovely, of things that are a good report. Of, should I go through the list? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, what you thinking about? And see, if you just continually set your mind on things that are below and low and bad, especially in your perspective, right? Then you're going to depress yourself, oppress yourself. But we need to come out from under that. Arise and to, and to look at all the wonderful and amazing things that God uh, has done for us. Now, you think about it, uh, that most of the world, we saw our Thanksgiving, uh, um, you know, advertisement to help. And, and uh, it had been mentioned that Brother Eddie didn't have a lot of means, you know. He lived in East St. Louis, you know. He grew up in a very dangerous place, in a very, uh, you know, oppressed place. And uh, so, so now he's blessed. He wants to give back. He wants to help people that are in that condition in his world now. And so he gives back. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thing to do. And so when you're thankful, when you're grateful, and you start coming out from under some oppression of some kind, we do need to have a reciprocal. And, they, and, and Eddie, he, he would take um, young boys and, and help them, take them to ball games. He just did a lot for the community, and we appreciate Eddie so much. But what did that do? That brought him joy. And we st start forgetting about our own pain, our own misery, our own problems. And that's what I'll do. I know I counsel a lot of people and I'll tell them, you know what you need to do? You, start need to, you need to start helping other people. And they're like, wait, what? I'm miserable. Why would I help others? I need to get help myself. So you don't want to wait till you're not miserable. You want to go help somebody else and you'll forget all about your own misery. You start realizing, you know what? I don't really have it all that bad after all. A friend of mine, he worked for, uh, let's see, you know, Lester Summerall, let's see, uh, Feed the Hungry. And, uh, and so he said to me, because he traveled the world and saw a lot of poverty. But he said, he said, Pastor Randy, he said, we, the church, have made a mistake by going to other countries with the gospel and not with food. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, he said, most of the world spends their life looking for their next meal. And that really shook me. I went, wow. We don't even know what that means. We don't even know what that means. Most of us, we might, it might have been tough, might have been tight. We didn't have a lot of extra. But we don't know what it means to actually, literally, I don't know where my next meal's coming from every single day. And there might be a couple of people that had some days like that. But listen, our street people live better than most of the world. And we got three places that feed Three times a day here in Las Vegas for the homeless. They just line up and get a hot meal. I'm telling you, we are so blessed. So we need to kind of wake up and smell the coffee, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and realize that we really honestly, uh, as, as a United uh, people of this country, we, we really don't have any excuses to be depressed. And oftentimes when we fear things that aren't even going to happen, <laughs> we get depressed. So we need to rejoice. We need to choose to rejoice and get happy in the same shoes we got angry in. Change. Change. And begin to believe the best because when you get into that dark place, you're capable of doing all kinds of ungodly things. When you get into that place, you do stuff that you should not do, that God would not have you to do. And it seems right. When you're being deceived 
by yourself, <laughs> it's a horrible place. And so we want to arise, shake off the heavy bands and rejoice and do your happy dance. Praise the Lord. Get up every morning. Do your happy dance to the Lord. Father God, I just thank you that I'm breathing today. I thank you that I got up again. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to serve you. I thank you, Father God, that I'm breathing. I thank you, Father God, that I can jump into that water and all the mess come right off of me and meet you soap. And Lord, I just thank you for soap. I thank you for shampoo. I thank you for, oh, I thank you for my Fruit Loops. I thank you for, oh, my cup of coffee and, and, and I got heavy whipping cream to put in there. Praise the Lord. I said heavy whipping cream. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, my dad is 94 years old. This turn, 94 years old, has drank coffee with heavy whipping cream and white sugar, processed white sugar, his whole life. Has all of his mind, well, you know, that's always been in question, actually, but anyway. <laughs> He's so honored, I love him. And so, so we, you know, it's interesting uh, and, 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 you know, I've evaluated people that live long. And I see this. They don't sweat the small stuff. That is probably the greatest key that I've seen. Secondly, uh, they're probably people that don't badmouth other people. That would be the second thing. But number one is that they don't sweat the small stuff. I kind of took note that some of the people that survived um, the Auschwitz, you know, the concentration camps, I, I, I took note that people that have gone through extreme things often live a long time. So they survived the thing that many didn't, but everything else is downhill in life after that. They just don't get upset about nothing. And I really believe that is a key to longevity, is not sweating the small stuff in reality god will keep you won't he i said won't he if you believe his word hallelujah praise the lord god is good like i said i might not get off of this small point that i was going to make it's becoming the point first john fifteen five. 1 John 15, 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When you walk in this way, you are invincible. One man said, if you want what God wants for the same reason God wants it, you are invincible. That means that you would be living this way. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. We could align ourselves with this passage to see if we are invincible today. But joy is what I'm focusing on, which is a fruit of the Spirit. Something that springs forth from the Spirit. Love being out front. Joy following close behind. <laughs> when people say, how are you doing today? We should start with, ha, ha, ha. Funny you should ask. This is the day. That the Lord has made. Let us together rejoice and be glad in it. Are you happy today, my brother? I think you've been smoking weed. Right? Because a lot of times that's not what people's response is. And so, so you know, and they, you think, well, you know, you do want to be real. Yes. But you can say, you know what? I've been going through some challenges, but God is good. And I believe I have the victory. Hallelujah to Jesus. I have what God says I have. Amen. I can do what God says I can do. 
I will say what God tells me to say. And I will do what he tells me to do. Hallelujah. Changes the way we live. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this word uh, joy actually is interesting. It's, it could be translated um, in many of our English words, which is actually translated that way in, in uh, as Strong's. We look at that word and that number in the Strong's, and, uh, in other words, in the Greek, and it shows us all the different ways it's translated. Uh, so it's joy, delight, um, rejoice, uh, often um, actually gladness, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> Looking for, yeah, joyfulness, joy. Oof, glory to Jesus. Somebody just get happy right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it says to abound more exceedingly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But, so primarily the main uh, translation is gladness, joy, rejoicing. And uh, so we just have to measure our joy level. Praise God. Where are we functioning? How are we acting? What are we doing? Are we just totally consumed by whatever the thing that took place that took you in the place you're not supposed to be? You know, what is that thing? Well, let's just put that aside. Let's just set that on the shelf. Set that on the shelf. And get out of that place for just a moment. Get back into that place of joy. And then when you're in this place now, the place of joy, you can look back at that thing. It looks different. It used to be a mountain, now it's just a molehill. Does anybody know what a molehill is? Does anybody know what a mole is? A mole, got a few people that are um, not from Las Vegas because a, a mole couldn't possibly get through this rock, you know, concrete that can't be called soil. But anyhow, uh, but, but so there's these little creatures called moles. You know, and, and uh, I grew up on a little farm, and, and uh, so so it was kind of like a pastime for the neighbors to get together, bring out their, you know, you would think they were shooting an elk, but it was a mole, you know, and they're bringing like 357 magnums, you know, and and waiting for the moles to come up so they could shoot. Yeah, this is real. Praise God. It's amazing. It's amazing what men do for entertainment, you know, but anyhow. But they would go out there and, and just blow these moles. But they cause trouble. Moles uh, create um, holes in the ground. And it could possibly um, uh, uh, break an ankle of a cow or a, or a horse or whatever the livestock are. So anyway, they, they're a nuisance and they need to die, you know. And uh, so if they had grenades, I'm sure they would use them. But uh, Anyways, so, so, but making a mountain of a molehill means a, a molehill is usually doesn't get much taller than this, you know, and we tend to make mountains out of it. Like, oh my goodness, look at that mountain. And we let that little, little dirt hill just mess with us because we just think about it. We lay on the ground in front of it. That is a mountain. Look at that mountain. And it looks like a mountain when your face is in it. But if you'll just stand back up and look down at the molehill, realize I could actually just put my foot on top of that and just flatten that right out. And uh, when the men of that era were not entertaining themselves with their firearms, they would put traps inside of those holes. And the mole would come up and it would hit that trap, kind of like a mouse trap. And so, so we know how to deal with our enemy. Isn't that right, you guys? We are to put our foot on his neck. And we are to speak into those situations of life. But by no means will we allow ourselves to lower ourselves to the ground and make ourselves equivalent with the mohill. Because it will look like a mountain to you. Praise the Lord. And, and we love our friends. We love our family members. We love our spouses, our children. Um, and, and we want to be committed to those relationships. But one thing I'm not going to do is compromise my position with the Lord. In order to appease any of those relationships. Does that make sense? So I don't have an obligation to be depressed because my family lives that way. 
I don't have an obligation to go into dark places because that's where most of the people are. I actually have a command to rejoice in the Lord always. And sometimes you just want to scream when people are running their mouths. And you know, I see many of you like, ah! They're like, why'd you do that? I don't know. <laughs> There's something inside of you. It's like, no, no, that's not how it is. Because you understand that Jesus will never leave his throne for any of these mohills or little circumstances or situations of this place, of my family, of my city, of my nation, or the world for that matter. One day he will leave that throne and he will come back and a sword will come out of his mouth and judge this mess. There will be blood up to a horse's saddle. He will set up camp and say now let me show you how this is done and that's coming I know it's coming I know I'm going to be on one of them horses behind him I'm going to have long white hair flowing behind me look like Braveheart I'm like yeah Yeah. I am William Wallace you know praise God So all of this will become very insignificant. And when we really consider Jesus and all that he has done, what he has done for us, what he is living for us, hallelujah, then everything fades away. All of our big mohills get flattened out. And Jesus is exalted again. And we can rejoice and we can dance and we can shout in every circumstance of life. No matter what this world puts our way. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank God. Hallelujah. First John 15, 5. I hope somebody's getting some help today. Praise God. This was just actually originally going to be a side message to prepare for the message. But apparently it needed to be the message. I'm pretty much getting used to this. At least I kind of knew something that God was going to do today. Because half the time I get up here, he just takes over and I'm like, all right, just go along for the ride. Might as well. You'd be better to hear from him than me anyhow. And so the joy of the Lord definitely is our strength. And we know that it is a fruit of the spirit. But here in 1 John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So all of your somethings that are not done in connection with the vine are nothings. As proud as we may be of our somethings that were done in our own efforts, in our own thoughts, our own minds, separated from the vine, those things are meaningless. Those works shall be burned. But when we connect back up to the vine, then we begin to act in a way, in such a way that God is able to flow and actually get those righteous works done through us. And and we have exploited feelings so much and elevated feelings and have made them a God in our society. And God will have you to do things that don't feel good. But it is his plan, his will, and he will do them through you if you will yield and you will defy your own thoughts, your own consciousness, and you will yield to your spirit because when you walk from this place, it literally is a place of victory, of fruitfulness, of blessing, and you will not just be blessed, but you will be a blessing to others, an example. 
And people will want to follow after your example and do things like you do them because they see the victory. They see the blessing. They see the peace. They can't understand it. They know you. What happened to you? Well, I just decided to do it the way God wanted me to do it. I read his book. I yielded to his ways. His ways are higher than our ways. There's just going to be things that don't make sense. Go with it. Praise God. Just go ahead and rejoice in the face of all H-E double toothpicks breaking loose. Glory to God. I thank God that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you realize after a while, after years of serving God and honoring God, that you realize that he just doesn't get moved by this stuff. Right. And if I'll just kind of just get back in there as fast as I can, rejoice in the circumstance and situation. In other words, uh, you know, it's not the you know, bad thing happened. You're not rejoicing. Oh, thank you for that. No, it's you're rejoicing regardless of that. Right. In spite of that. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And uh, in, in marriage, you will learn how to rejoice or you will divorce. I am not condemning anybody. This is my first wife. I've married her many times, though, during these years. Remarried. No, we didn't do the paperwork. People say, you know, hey, have you ever considered divorce? I, I wish I could say no. I wish I could say that. I wish I could say I hadn't really considered homicide. <laughs> but there is a devil. And she's probably thought she wanted to take me out many times. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've never, take her, I've never taken her out shooting with us, just so you know. <laughs> no. I'd be actually more concerned about her hurting herself, to be honest. So, Anyway. But it's just, uh, it's just that we do, we deal with stuff. If you've survived being with people for a long period of time, you've had to learn how to forgive. You've had to learn how to rejoice regardless of how they treated you or acted towards you. We just have to quit being such a sensitive people. I'm telling you, this is how it works. Works in every area of our lives. I mean, he's like, ha, 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 yeah, that's why there's man caves. We have to go there, adjust ourselves, and I know that there's also women caves, don't get me wrong, I think, I think everybody, if they ever needed me time, which I believe all of us do, is to realign ourselves with him. Realign ourselves with love and joy and to forgive. Come back out of there. Shake it off. Come back out of there and get after it again. Ha <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's agape, I guarantee it. Just agape. Just the God kind. Because my phileo is really struggling right now. You know, the phileo love is conditional. Gape has no conditions. It loves unconditionally. Otherwise, we'd be just, God would have just flicked us all out into eternity. And we'd still be a blazing ball of fire going through the universe. But God so loved the world. And he required us now to do the same Amen. hallelujah. hallelujah praise the lord mm -hmm. praise god thank you jesus well let's see if we can get one more scripture out first peter chapter one first peter chapter one I might be able to pick this back up next week. We'll see what God, God does. 
First Peter chapter one, verses seven and eight says that the, tri- the trial of your faith being much more precious than, than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom thou, though now ye see him not, yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So the challenges we face are working in us a far greater glory. And uh, it's, it's difficult for me to find um, people that are willing to do the workout that I do in the gym. My friend Warren is in the house. We appreciate him. Thank you. Thank you for surviving me. Glory to God. And uh, he's gone from a very small person to a very large person as a result and uh, hard work in the gym. But most people, there are people that have been with me. And, and uh, 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 yeah, you knew I was coming after you today, didn't you? You knew it, yeah. And uh, so, so, so the, a lot of people, and I see them in the gym too, they're like, oh, heck no. Well, why is it? Well, they don't want the cost, the pressure, the pain, the suffering that is demanded to get where we have gone. And uh, uh, I see people in the gym all the time. that they, they show up to the gym. And, they're, and, and we're all friends. You know, you hang out with lots of people at the gym. Hey, what's up, bro? Where you been? You know, that kind of thing. But they look the same. I mean, on both sides. You know, either thin or, or not, you know. And, and uh, so, so you just think, man, if you would just get in here and get after it. But there is a cost. There is a cost. It hurts. And then you, next day you wake up and you, and you look like Fred Sanford. You know, like, <laughs> you, know eh, 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 you know, just like, this is a big one. You know, you just look funny. You know, it's like, and that's how, I mean, literally I get up and sometimes I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, as I get older, it gets the worst. I have to stretch more. I have to do, there is a cost. But I am thankful that I can still get up and go to the gym. I can still do those things. And, and by doing that, I'm able to maintain some semblance, fit in my pants. Not easy, but I can still fit in them. So, but I'm working. I'm paying the price to look a certain way. But few people are willing to do it. They want to, but few people are willing so there's some kind of a sacrifice. There's some kind of a, a pain, a hurt that it costs in order to have this benefit. And we know the scriptures say this light affliction works for us a far greater and eternal glory. And so it hurts to die to ourselves. When your soul and your flesh want to be X, Y, Z, whether it be angry, unforgiving, uh, you know, we think that we're condoning a certain behavior if we act like it's okay now. Listen, the Bible is requiring it of us. And you need to die to ourselves. And it's, you know, in the Old Testament, they used to sacrifice animals all the time. And, and I tell you what, there just seems like a lot of times in our life, there's just nothing but smoke and flesh. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. So that we can be the people God has intended us to be. And rejoice in the same skin we got angry in. Get happy in it. Say, I forgive you. I love I love love you. Even harder, I was you can do it come on wrong I was wrong now how'd that make you feel it's amazing how we battle our flesh God can help us to be the great people he intended for us to be 
only by the grace of God. And I found that humility has a great part in rejoicing because I will humble myself and obey God. I will rejoice in the Lord always. I will rejoice when I don't feel like rejoicing. And there's times even physically and naturally that we don't feel like rejoicing. It's just don't feel like it. I like what Pastor Mark said years ago. He said that one morning um, he, was, he was worshiping, praising God and doing his devotion time. And the Holy Spirit told him, the Father likes it when you dance. And he's like, uh, well, I don't really feel like dancing. The Father likes it when you dance. He kept telling him, he's like, all right, <laughs> praise God. So he just started worshiping that way. And guess what happened? All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came on him, just strengthened him. And what he didn't feel like doing, he really was glad that he did. When it comes to illustration of working out, uh, I always tell people, my favorite part is leaving the gym. <laughs> That's my favorite part, you know? And they're like, you must really like it. I'm like, no, but I like leaving. In other words, I like that I accomplished it. Amen. I did what was necessary to make the gains that I want to make. And that, as believers, we need to do whatever is necessary to be the great people that God's called us to be. Make the sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of worship, the sacrifice that would give him glory and allow him to come move into our hearts and our lives.